Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Karen Lavender Clothesline here on YouTube, also on eBay and Instagram. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today is Thursday and I am doing the haul video from my Monday Memorial Day yard sailing trip. Now, as I've explained in the past, my town does a town-wide yard sale, community yard sale, and everybody puts their stuff out on their front lawns. Hundreds of houses participate, and I get an early start and fill my car. Now, this year was a little bit of a quiet year, quiet as um, compared to other years, and a little bit quiet in that I didn't pick up as much as I normally do. I still have a table full before me, and we're going to go through a few of those items. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's see what I bought. Let's see if any of this stuff is going to make profit. <music> All right, so I am gonna jump right into it, tell you what I paid for things, and most of it I have no idea what to expect. Definitely gonna make profit on all of it, but a lot of times I don't know what items are gonna bring if I haven't sold the item before or if there aren't a lot of comps. In other words, if it's something unusual. But you guys know me, I use my gut instinct, which serves me really well, and I am going to try not to look out the front window because we have bunny action. I'm not sure if the babies are born, I see the mama hopping around a little bit, so if I get to see the babies, I will turn the camera around. All right, let's start with this first piece. So I saw this sitting at a yard sale. This is the Pioneer Woman's, I think it's called the Spice Cabinet. There's a name to this, I think. Little drawers with uh, porcelain or ceramic fronts, and the drawers come out. Could be a tea caddy, I would think. So tea or spices. This would even be cute in an office, in my opinion, to keep like little uh, paper clips, rubber bands, things like that. It is a wood cabinet all the way around. And you can see the marking, the Pioneer Woman. It just says how to clean it, wipe clean. So not exactly sure what the original purpose is, but I said yes to this and I paid $3 for it. No, I did not comp anything while I was yard sailing. I just ran from yard sale to yard sale, just hopping in and out of the car. I don't think I comped one thing. So it'll be very interesting to see how I did because most trips, most times I shop, I'm usually comping one or two things. But because the buy-in price is so low at yard sales, generally a dollar or two, maybe three for my best items, maybe this guy was 10, I don't comp. So I just use my gut instinct after eight years of thrifting and yard selling. So that is item number one, Pioneer, the Pioneer Woman's, I'm gonna call it a tea chest. The next item up I have picked up before and I saw four pairs of these. I picked the best condition pair. They are Clark's Wallabies. I think that's how we say that. You know what, let me let me make sure I'm telling you guys that correctly. Where's my magnifying glass? <laughs> I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to see it. I believe they're called wallabies. W-A-L-L-E-B-E-E-S, wallabies. It's kind of like a desert boot, and these were the best ones in condition. Now the gentleman selling them did have three other pairs that were very worn. For some reason, he did not wear the black. And what did I pay for these? I believe I paid $5 for them. And for these, I expect to get probably 45. So great condition, really nice leather. And I said yes to these. And while we're doing shoes, I'm gonna do a couple of other pairs of shoes and we'll get all the shoes off the table so we can go on to hard goods. The next shoes have a funny story. So I got there quite early to these people's yard sale and the husband was there and the wife was down the street talking to a friend. I guess they were talking about yard selling or whatever. And I saw shoes. So I started to look at the shoes. This is the first pair, a woman's pair of wedge cross strapped sandals. And these are just Italian shoemakers. I find this brand in uh, Marshalls and TJ Maxx. So there was this pair. They look to be worn once or twice, I'm going to say. You can see a little bit of wear there. And at that same yard sale, I found these ballet flats. That's what they look like. Not quite a spectator style. Quite nice. And who makes these? I think these were, were they Cole Han. 
So I asked the gentleman, the husband, what he wanted for the shoes, and he said, oh, I don't know, aren't they priced? Didn't my wife price them? I said, I don't see a price, and I handed him the shoes, and he said, I don't know, how about $10 for the two pairs, $5 a pair? And I said, okay, that sounds pretty good. I said, by any chance, would you take eight for the two? And he said, yeah, that sounds good to me. So I gave him the $8, and that was all I bought at that yard sale, and as I was getting to my car, I heard the wife say, what did you sell? And he said, the shoes. And she said, how much did you get for them? And that was the end of the conversation. I just quickly got in my car and drove away. <laughs> so a little little uh, domestic disputes going on, how much the shoes were sold for, but I felt they were worth $4. Now, they're not an especially fast seller. I find both of these brands in Goodwill all the time. I usually pay 6 or $7, but for $4, I thought that was a pretty good buy. The last pair of shoes that I picked up weigh a ton. These guys are so heavy. They are Doc Martens, and they say made in England on them. Now, I believe Doc Martens, the newer ones, are made in China. Not exactly sure about that, but I don't believe all of the pairs are made in England. So when I see a pair says made in England, that draws me to them a little bit more so. It is a Mary Jane style. What's interesting about these is I believe they have a steel toe. So they're good for workplace, but they're also a Mary Jane, but they are quite heavy. And what did I pay for these? I think I paid $3 for them, two or $3. Next up, I was thrilled to find these. It was a bag of dresser knobs, and I'm gonna take some out so we can look at them. You guys know me, I pick up quite a bit of bureau or dresser um, hardware. And this is what they look like. Now I have not counted how many are in this bag, but this bag is quite, quite a few. And I will probably divide these up into lots because I don't know that somebody would want this many. I'm gonna guess there's over 60 in there. And when I got home, I noticed there was a little piece of paper that said a mirror rock, $5.60 each. And I paid $5.60 for the bag they charged me. So I don't know if they changed their price or somebody got the price wrong, but a really nice condition. And I don't know that they're worth $5.60 each. Could have been that price new, definitely. I will probably divide them up into lots of, I'm going to say maybe 10 to 12 in a lot. So I will get several lots out of this. Definitely worth $5.60. These next two canisters I really like. Now, I don't decorate with a lot of color in my house, but I thought these were especially pretty. They are like a striped latch top jar. And I found these at the same yard sale that I found the Pioneer Woman, uh, Reed Drummond, I think her name is. These were sitting on the table right next to that find, and I paid a dollar each. I love ceramic canister jars. I think because so many people really like to organize their staples in their pantry, in their kitchen, I do quite well with these. They have no marking. I don't see any branding, so I don't imagine there were anybody like Pioneer Woman or you know anything like that, but I went strictly by this striping and the colorway. So for $2 for two jars was a great find. Okay, hopefully the camera will pick this up and, and brighten this a little bit. My camera looks a little bit dark today. It's quite cloudy, so the whole house is dark. I think we're gonna get storms. The next item I saw, I went up the steps of a large old Victorian house, and I was thrilled that they were having a porch sale. And I did see this big nutcracker, and they wanted $15 for him, and I asked the gentleman if he would take 10, and he said sure. So I thought this was a great find. Now, I don't know that it's really high quality, but I know a lot of people collect nutcrackers. Christmas time, you know, you can sell a nutcracker so easy. And he's got to be, I'm going to say, over three feet tall. So I'm going to stand back with him so you can take a look at him. He's in great shape as far as I can tell. I did look to make sure he had all of his jewels. And yeah, I just thought he was quite wonderful. And there goes his, his nut cracking jaw. 
So I said yes to him for $10. Now I will be flipping this locally. Nope, not shipping nutcrackers that are over three feet tall, but I really liked him. And I thought that he was, you know, a pretty sure, sure bet. So quite a few people were laughing, um, watching me go down the street with this big nutcracker thrown over my shoulder. Okay, next group of things I think I'll do are animals. Anything that has an animal or is an animal, I'll try to stay organized and just pick all the animals off the table. And the first one I thought was so adorably cute, no branding. This is a corduroy pig door stopper. He's very heavy. And I thought he was great. He's in very good condition. He has a little bit of uh, dust on him, but nothing to speak of. And they wanted a dollar fifty for him. I offered a dollar, and they took it. This doorstop is not a toy. That's the only way I really figured that he was a doorstop was that his tag says it. And I've never seen this, so I thought he was great fun. The next animal I picked up right away. The minute I got to that yard sale, it just went right over and took him. I didn't care whether he would resell. I knew he'd resell. <laughs> He's really great. A beaded lion. So he's a wire sculpture and he's completely beaded. I thought he was fantastic and I believe I paid two dollars for him. Nope, a dollar. His little tag says a dollar. So that was a great find. I would think that the pig doorstop will probably bring, I'm probably going to sell him for like either $15 or $19.99, something like that. But the lion I will probably get, I'm going to say at least $30 for. All right, so those are those two animals. The next two are birds. I've spoken about these before, and these are Tonala. Tonala, Mexico is a city that is very famous for their artwork. A lot of painters there, sculptors, a lot of pottery. And these are what these look like. This one was $3, and this one was $3. I offered five for the two, and they said yes. So he's a toucan. I'm going to get myself into trouble with animals because in the last video I was holding up a rooster and I said it was a turkey and you guys are so on it. I love you guys that you were just like, um, it's a rooster. <laughs> and I knew that. Somewhere in my brain it was saying turkey and my mouth was saying rooster. So I'm going to go with a dove and a toucan. I'm probably toucan. I'm probably wrong about that. But um, these are great, and these themselves are not high dollar items. I would imagine under 20 a piece. But I love looking at Tanala pottery. A lot of it does go for very good money. If you find one of the larger cats, uh, the dogs, some of the bigger pieces are just stunningly beautiful. And Tanala pottery has been around for a long time. I'm going to guess late 1800s, total guess. But I know that when you find the vintage pieces, especially the bigger ones, hundreds of dollars. But I just love the aesthetic of it. So anytime I see it, I pick it up. All right, what other animals? We have three more animals on the table. The next one up is this guy. How sweet is he? I didn't even get out of my driveway. This was my neighbor across the street and she sold him to me. He's a lasso apsu. I love when an item <laughs> says what it is. I don't get into any trouble. And I paid $3 for him. I wasn't going to offer my neighbor less. I paid full price. How cute is he? He's just a plastic resin and I have no idea. Uh, this is the Danbury Mint. So I don't know. It's not going to bring a, a lot of money. It's not going to bring a high dollar, but he was just too cute. So as you can see, this yard sale haul, these are pretty common items. And when I find common items, I don't turn away. I'm not the type of seller that's only looking for antiques or high end items. Well, I always want to raise my profit per item. If I'm listing and I can list something in a couple of minutes and I know it's going to get attention and sell, as long as I'm making a good profit, I go with it. So if I buy something for $2, I'm fine with selling it for $15 to $20. Now, like I always say, I don't want a whole store of that, but with over 3,000 items, I can afford to do that a couple of hundred times. And it helps your sell-through rate improve. So when eBay sees you're selling things, you know, more often, I believe you get bumped up in the search. And that is why I do pick up common items. I'm going to call them cute items, items that aren't really a high dollar value, but I feel that will make somebody happy and that they'll sell. All right, next one up. 
is a flying squirrel. <laughs> and this is put out by Slices Ted Safari LTD something creatures. Incredible creatures. Let me get the magnifying glass. Flying squirrel. Incredible creatures. So it's just like a little collectible, maybe for children. But I thought he was just spectacular and very fun. I paid a dollar for him. Another item I paid a dollar for, a peacock coat hook or towel hook or some kind of hook. Thought he was beautiful. He has all of his rhinestones. I did check up. Oh, he's missing two. Before I say he has all of his rhinestones, I should check again. Missing two, but I don't think it's that bad that it detracts. That's what that looks like. Just made out of a plastic resin, but I thought the colorway was really good on this one. Even the little crystal, plastic crystal knob is uh, matching. And I have one more animal item that is going to make noise. It is a mobile, but I thought this one was really good. They wanted $5. Um, it is a frog wind chime. Let's see if I can get this up without making too much noise. So these frogs are all made out of ceramic and they're quite heavy. They're quite sturdy. And I thought this was very good. And what did I pay for this? They wanted five. I believe I paid, did I pay three? I paid three for this. I said, will you take three? And they said, sure. So I thought this would be great fun for a frog lover in the garden. I imagine I'm going to charge maybe 30, 25, 30 for this. The next item is a corner shelf, and I have sold these before. Now this one is not the nicest one I have found, but I do like picking up these die cut, I think this is die cut, uh, wood shelves. And it's a corner shelf, little curio or a little tchotchke shelf. I didn't see any damage to it, you know, as far as cracks or chips or anything like that. And this one, as far as I can tell, has no wall mounting hooks. So whoever's going to hang this, if they're going to put it like freestanding in the corner, you know, just mounted in the corner, they would need to put some kind of hooks on it. The yard sale owner wanted $5 and I paid four for it. So that is that item. I picked up one mug. I know. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be picking up single cups. I am doing better at that. But you know, when you come across something that's so beautiful and interesting and it's a dollar, you have to have a little leeway in your rules. That's what I say. Look at this cup. I thought this was very good. I really like that southwestern painted glazed motif. And it does have a marking. Who is this? Made in Bulgaria for Bulgar USA, B-U-L-G-A-R. Two dollars they wanted for it and I paid a dollar. Really, really like this cup. I like the shape of it, the way the bottom is wider so it's more stable, but it's the paint. It's the, you know, graphic that drew me to it. I did pick up an item that, I don't know, it was one of those items that you just take. It is a gourd dipper. So this is a natural grown gourd. And I believe these gourds grow pretty much straight down. You trellis them and they hang and then they can be used as a dipper. Now the reason I kind of didn't really want it is this one does have a hairline crack. So I don't know that it's really going to work well if somebody is using it for water somehow. I guess they could seal it with a silicone but for now I will of course disclose it and I paid two dollars for it but I thought the aesthetic of it was really nice for primitive you know country house farmhouse to just have laying on a table as an item of interest okay the next few items are hats you know me shoes and hats I'm all about shoes and hats it's so weird because I don't think I wear a hat sometimes in the bitter cold if it's like three feet of snow out, I might put a hat on. But other than that, I'm not really a hat person. I don't know why I'm drawn to hats. 50 cents, that's probably why. Little straw hat. And this one is Lauren Ralph Lauren, made in China, size medium. It's like a little sun hat fedora type thing. So I picked up that one. I paid the 50 cents. <laughs> and I picked up this great hat. It's like a gardening wide brim. Good for the beach. And I believe this is, let me just check before I say, uh, Smith & Hawken. 
So that is what that looks like. I don't know if Smith & Hawken is still in business. They were a catalog company. They also had locations and I loved that store. And then for a while, I believe Target carried Smith & Hawken items, but I don't know if Smith & Hawken still has the catalog. So leave a comment down below if you still see the Smith & Hawken catalog uh, put out. So that is hat number two. And I have one more hat is this hat. And this one is called Fits Most. Head, head, head. It's the word head three times. Small or medium? Do I have a small or medium head? Oh, there's a thing on it. So I guess, oh, it's a price tag, 50 cents. I thought it was an emblem. There is an emblem. It looks like a lizard on the side, but it looks like the lizard is upside down. I will try that on, see how that looks. <laughs> what do we think of that hat? See, I don't have a good hat head, but I thought this was good. All right, so those are the three hats that I picked up. Okay, two items, three items more, and then we'll finish up. I did pick up this art print. Now this is not artist done, you know, it's not an original or anything like that, but anytime I find prints like this that are roses, still life roses, I almost always get them. They always sell for me, always. So what did I pay for this? It does have a little inscription from somebody, from the Westons, it looks like, 1998, and it is just called Roses, Vermont Print, Vermont Print Framers. So I said yes to that. I imagine this is gonna bring 20, $25. And I did pick up this wall hook, thought that was really nice two hooks and this looks like maybe it's supposed to be like a, a doorknob of some sort or the look of a doorknob it's not a real doorknob and i paid a dollar for that and what else we will do one more item i picked up some prints some art prints and i'm trying to remember what i paid for these you know what i can't remember i'm going to say three dollars and they are just scenes of alaska and i will sell these together so that is the first scene. Let's see if I can get them apart. So the first one is Juneau, Alaska. Ketchikan. Now I'm gonna test myself if I know how to pronounce these places, which I probably don't. That's what that one looks like. Skagway. Just beautiful. And the last one is which one didn't I do? Ketchikan. Oh, there's two Ketchikan. So the bottom of these prints, I'm going to call them, this watercolor is painted exclusively for Milano Diamond Gallery by renowned Alaskan watercolor artist Don Kolstad, maybe? Looks like Kolstad. For your limited edition signed and framed watercolor. They're prints, <laughs> but I thought they were very beautiful. And somebody, you know, who visited Alaska, maybe took a cruise there. Now I'm making stuff up, would want these. And I will probably sell these. I'm going to look them up. I should be able to find these for a comp price. But if I can't find a comp price, probably 30 to 40. And I will roll these and send these either in a tube or the triangular USPS mailing boxes that you can get for free. So that is today's haul. Thanks so much for joining in. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.